I'm Deacon Fournier. On St. Patrick's Day, everyone is Irish. The celebration's an example that at least we still have a Christian memory in the West. But as we tumble toward what many are calling a post-Christian culture, the heritage of this apostle to Ireland might be lost if we don't stop and consider his message and his mission. So who is this saint named Patrick whose feast we celebrate during Lent? And why does it even matter? Because just like Patrick, we're called to be missionaries in our own age. Only our mission field is right outside our windows. When Patrick landed in Ireland in 432, he drew from a deep, living, dynamic faith he had in Jesus Christ, lived in the heart of the church he loved. He understood the challenge he faced. After all, he had been held captive as a prisoner in that land, as a young man. And he went back because the Lord called him. He was not naive. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He knew the culture. He knew the Druids who ruled it. And he knew he'd face hostility. But most importantly, he knew Jesus. And so he was unafraid. Patrick had a missionary strategy and a missionary heart. And we need both. When he entered into a district, he'd preach the gospel to the chieftains, and then following their custom, he'd offer them a gift. Only a few became Christians, but Patrick knew exactly what he was doing, because then he'd ask for two favors, a plot of land on which to build a church, and permission to preach the gospel widely. And both were granted. So here's what he'd do. He'd go to the sons and the daughters of the rulers. And he later wrote in his book called The Confession, that Ireland, where nobody had had the knowledge of God and worshiped idols and abominations, became a people of the Lord and children of God, and that the sons and daughters of those Irish chieftains became monks and virgins for Christ. Now we have a similar task in the West, so we should learn a lesson from this great missionary example. Patrick saw what was good in the culture, and he baptized what could be redeemed. He respected the civil order, but he never compromised the faith. And then he won the next generation by preaching the gospel without compromise and letting the power of the Holy Spirit work through him. And what happened? All of Ireland became Christian and from its shores, Western civilization, rooted in the Christian faith, advanced to change the whole world. The gospel took root in the Celtic culture and transformed it from within as leaven in a loaf. And Ireland came to be known as the island of saints and scholars. We need to become the St. Patrick's for our own age. And remember this, the same God whom Patrick served is still at work, and he's still pouring out his Holy Spirit, and he's still calling men and women to be fishers of men and women in the third Christian millennium. So celebrate, happy St. Patrick's Day, and then let's get to work.